Hi, and welcome to Art Today. I'm Rachel Neese, and today we are going to get into pinch pots. So this is one of my very favorite projects to do. I am a ceramics teacher in high school, so of course this is right up my wheelhouse, but it's also one of the reasons I became an artist. So when I was in college thinking I was going to be an interior designer or an anthropologist, I had no idea. I ended up taking a ceramics class and I was done. Like I knew what I wanted to do. I was going to be a ceramic artist and lo and behold, I've ended up finding teaching as well. And the two together is just perfect combination for me. And every year I start off with pinch pots with my students. Now we do use um, real clay that we put in a kiln and we fire and we glaze and there's this whole process. But this is something you can do at home with little kids like my niece with Play-Doh we're making pinch pots. We've had the pre-K program here at the school. They've used clay, they've made pinch pots and we fired them and gotten that done. You also have air dry clay you can use this with. The only type of clay I would say probably wouldn't lend its well, lend its way well to a pinch pot would probably be the Sculpty oven baking clay, but all the other clays will work for this. I'm just gonna be using what we have in the classroom today to show you. So to give you some examples of what a pinch pot might look like when it's done, you have this lovely side one that I did in grad school. At the beginning of this year, my ceramics three students made two pinch pots and put them together and made a rattle, which is really cool. Um, another one from grad school. We've got this behind me. We actually, the pumpkins are all pinch pots. The bird house at the end, that's two pinch pots put together and carved. So you can make so many things out of making just this one pinch pot. And the biggest thing I love about like clay in general, but also pinch pots, is it goes so far back in history. We're not sure, and I could be wrong, but last time I checked, we're not sure how old the oldest ceramic piece is. But at some point, someone dug up some clay at the river bank, played with it, probably made a little bowl or figure, took it home, sat it by the fire, and realized that the fire made it hard and that they could put water and other things into these vessels that they were making. And it has been become something that so many anthropologists and scientists and archaeologists, they know so much about what people did in the past all over from what ceramics and pottery pieces they leave behind. So a way of connecting with your past as a human being and realizing that all artists are human. Like I always say, if you're human, you're an artist. You don't have to be particularly good for what you know society is telling you as long as you're enjoying what you're doing. And throughout the, the millennia, humans have been making pinch pots. So to get into it, the first thing you're gonna need is some kind of clay. Like I said, you can use air dry clay. You can get air dry clay in about 10 pound boxes from a lot of craft stores. You can get smaller or bigger. You can also make your own air dry clay. There's plenty of recipes. Um, sometimes they're a little harder depending if, if you're in a real humid area or not. Where we are, Deep in the south, we've got a lot of humidity, so it's real hard to find an air dry clay that you can make that works, but it is doable. Um, so get your clay. The first thing you're going to do when you get your clay is make sure not to throw your back out. Uh, the type of clay I get for the students is called a low fire clay, which just means it's fired at below 2000 degrees. And it comes in 50 pound boxes in each bag. So this block, itself is 25 pounds. Now when we make all our things and it's all the moisture and stuff comes out, it's not going to end up being 25 pounds when it's all said and done, but when it's wet and moist and all that fun stuff, it is. So the first thing we're gonna do is use this nice clean wire tool and cut off a chunk of our clay. Now if you don't have a wire tool, you can use fishing line or dental floss that also works 
but you can also just rip it off with your hand. There's just, you don't have to get fancy and spend a whole lot of money if you're just playing around with this. So the first thing that we do in class, because this is real clay, is we do something that's called wedging. And there's a couple different types, types of wedging that you can do. It takes a while to master it, but there are ways, and this is not the best surface to be wedging on. You probably wanna be wedging on a board. There are special boards or canvases. But essentially what wedging does is get the air out of your clay, like the air bubbles. Um, the big thing, especially if you're firing clay, your biggest enemy is going to be the moisture. So a lot of people will say it's the air bubbles that make your, your pieces explode in the kiln. It's not actually the air itself. It's the moisture when it starts steaming, because you know, you start steaming moisture, it creates steam, obviously, and steam's a gas, gas has to go somewhere, and if you don't give it a way to come out of your piece, it's gonna make its own way out and it will explode on you. Um, nice thing with air dry clay, you're probably not gonna have any air bubbles exploding on you, but they can at some point, it'll weaken the wall. So if you have an air dry piece that you really love and you just tap it the wrong way and there happened to be some kind of air bubble in there with moisture trapped, it's weaker and it could possibly break on you. So what I am doing now is I'm just, I'm using like the heel of my hand to beat this guy into a ball. This is probably about two pounds of clay. When you start off one pound of clay or less, especially for little hands is all you need. With the pre-K students, I think I gave them half pound clay balls for their little hands and they worked out really well this year. So I am cutting that because I think it's a little big and I'm just gonna keep pounding it until it is a ball shape. So clay does take time and if you mess up, you can always redo it. That is the fun thing about clay until it is fired and all is said and done or it is dry. You just keep adding water to it and you can use it over and over again. So it's not till that chemical change happens that you really need to worry. So I've got roughly a ball. It does not need to be a perfect ball. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is stick my thumb in and I don't want to stick it all the way through. I want to make sure I still have a bottom of my bowl. So I'm just sticking my thumb in. I've made a nice hole in there. And when we come back, I am going to show you how to actually pinch and pull and create a pinch pot. So stay tuned, enjoy the messages and come back and see how we progress with our pinch pots. As Alabama's first and largest school system, Mobile County Public Schools prides itself on the high quality of education we provide our students. We have been successful over the years in raising our graduation rates. And have been recognized nationally for closing achievement gaps. We believe that our primary focus is to educate all students to become productive citizens. This is our commitment to them and to you. My name is Harshini, I'm a junior at Davidson High School, and after graduation I plan on pursuing a career in dermatology. Currently I'm taking science classes such as AP Chemistry, Biology, and Human Anatomy, which will help me pursue my career. I feel as though Mobile County is preparing me for my career choice in that they provide rigorous classes that help me think further beyond just what I'm learning. I'm Harshini Cannon, a junior at Davidson High School, and I'm learning today so I can be a leader tomorrow. Hi, and welcome back to Art Today. I'm Rachel Neese, 
And today we are making pinch pots, but make sure to check out YouTube slash MCPSS TV network for all your art today episodes. We do so many more things than just clay. So before we took our break, I stuck my thumb into the clay ball. Now we're gonna start the pinching motion. Now a lot of people get real confused because they're called pinch pots. You're going to be doing more than pinching. Pinching is just the main action. So again, this is clay that you do have to fire, but you can do this with air dry clay, um, model magic. You can do it with just about everything. Even Play-Doh, Play-Doh, it's messy. So the first thing I'm gonna do, put my thumb back in, and then I'm using my other hands on the outside, and I'm just going to pinch until it's open. Now, the big thing, you see that I am not putting my piece down on the table. Little hands, um, probably 10 and under, it's going to be hard for them to make a pinch pot the traditional way that's going to work and give you a real nice round one they're probably going to need to set it down. Half a pound gets heavy in your hand when you're working with it and doing things your hands aren't used to. But once you're older, you want to put the piece of clay in your hand and work in your hand and not put it down. Because when you're working with it putting down, especially if kids are putting water on the surface of what you're working on, especially plastic, it's gonna stick. And then you're not gonna be able to get their wonderful creation off so if you can help them hold it while you're doing this so we are going to keep pinching we're just opening up the walls of our pinch pot now it's hard to see on camera but you can feel it it's way thicker down here than it is up here so i still have a whole lot of clay down here on the bottom and i want it to come up to the top so i can work on it so this is not the pinching motion. This is now going to be a pulling motion. I personally use my thumb and I'm gonna go around here and try to make big strokes so you can actually see what I am doing. So you can see how I went in and I really pulled clay up and it's also real thick here still. So I'm going to put pressure and when I'm pinching, it's almost like a duck's mouth or like the shadow puppets, maybe something like that. And I want to work on the bottom because as you can tell, as I keep going, my hand's not gonna be able to reach down to the bottom as my walls are coming up. Eventually, it's gonna be taller than my hand is. So I want to get my bottom kind of like the best that I can and make sure that that's as thin as I want my bottom. So as I'm working on the inside, I'm just kind of bringing the clay up halfway with my hands or with my thumb, not with my hands. And the big thing when you're pulling up the clay with your thumb, you don't want to go all the way up like that. That's going to give you real thin piece right up here. And then you're going to end up with a crumbly edge. So you actually want to stop your thumb right before the lip. And we'll get to that eventually. But it is really you're pulling up with your hand and then you're going through and you're pinching. And it's just kind of repeating these actions over and over again until you get some kind of bowl like shape that you like. And if you have air bubbles in your clay, this is the time when you're going to feel them as you're pinching and as you're pulling, you're going to feel those air bubbles popping. And remember, if you're using air dry clay, they're not gonna be like the biggest deal in the world. You're just gonna to wanna to pop them. But if you're using clay that's gonna go in the kiln, you do want to watch those because that's how your piece goes kaboom in the, the kiln. Um, unfortunately, that is just part of ceramics. So it's a hard thing for my students. They get real attached to their artworks and they will explode the first time in the kiln. They could possibly drop and crack when they're working on them in class after that and adding the color. There's, they can crack again in the kiln when they go back the second time. You know, they could get the piece home and the dog wags his tail and it drops. Um, 
it's part of why I like ceramics. You never know what's going to happen. And the pieces are useful. A lot of the times you can do sculptural art. I like the functional personally, um, but you just never know. I have a few pieces from back in the early 2000s I did in college that my husband and I use pretty, pretty much daily. We can put in the washing machine and um, put it in the microwave. And then I have other pieces that did not make it. Um, mainly, I love my dad, but he was the big culprit in <laughs> accidentally dropping a lot of my pieces. And that was, it happens. So it takes a while to get good at this. So your first pinch pot is not going to look like mine. You have to think I have made at this point probably close to a thousand, a thousand pinch pots. So I can make them real quick, real well. They're still not perfect. And I think that's another reason why I like ceramics. Ceramics is not perfect. Um, having pottery that is handmade you're always gonna have imperfections, but there's beauties, beauty in that imperfection. There's even a few cultures that they, they love their ceramics so much that if a piece breaks, instead of throwing it away, they put it back together with gold or some other kind of precious metal, and it's worth more at that point and loved more because it has lasted that long. All right, so as I have been telling you guys a bunch of stuff that you may or may not want to hear, I have gotten my pinch pot pretty thin. I've made it pretty wide. It's still a little thick on the bottom. And with that, I can kind of put my fist in and start shaping. So if I want it longer, I can squish it in. If I want it wider, I can pinch it out again with those same pinching techniques. So the next thing, when we come back, we're going to kind of smooth it out, talk about the best ways to make it even if I need to. And then I will show you how to add feet to your bowl if you want it to have feet. So we are going to take a quick break and put the sucker in front of the heat heater and try to get it a little bit drier so I can show you how to add those feet and finish it up. So go take a break, get a drink, and come back and join us for finishing up our finish pots. As Alabama's first and largest school system, Mobile County Public Schools prides itself on the high quality of education we provide our students. We have been successful over the years in raising our graduation rates and have been recognized nationally for closing achievement gaps. We believe that our primary focus is to educate all students to become productive citizens. This is our commitment to them and to you. things. Things couldn't be better. What do you mean? Well, I just started this new job as a school teacher with the Mobile County Public Schools and it has been a life changer. Great benefits, the hours are great, and great students. Just the overall, it's a great opportunity. Oh wow, that sounds great. Yeah. I'm going to look into that. You should. For more information, visit mcpss.com slash job opportunities. Hey guys, we are back and ready to finish up our pinch pots. So last time I went ahead and got it as smooth as I could. It's as big as I want it. Now, as clay starts to dry, even the air dry clay, it'll start to do this wrinkle effect. There's two real easy ways to fix that. One is to get a damp sponge. So you want to squeeze out that water. You don't want it like super wet and just kind of rub your piece gently um 
A lot of my students like to do this. They can get a real smooth surface with that. However, I like to really just get in there with my finger and smooth it out with my finger. I feel like it goes faster. It's just a personal preference with younger kids. If you're doing this at like a day camp or just something fun to make presents for family members, having those fingerprints in the clay, I think is a real nice, it's just a nice touch. It makes it more human. It reminds you of how little their fingers were. Um, could even, I'm, maybe when I'm old and I've got arthritis, if I can't really do ceramics anymore, I can at least like see what my fingers used to do and know that they were my fingerprints in the clay. So something to think about. Um, hopefully I won't have the arthritis, but we'll see. Um, you just wanna really go around and smooth out any imperfections you don't like. You'll see there were a few like little cracks that formed. There's a few things you can do if you're really trying to make this go in the kiln, perfect your craft. You can use something called a serrated rib and you can just kind of mess up your work a little bit and then it actually smooths out a little bit more. You can use other ribs that are made out of um, silicone or wood to smooth these out but you don't really need to buy fancy tools. You could essentially do what I just did with a like plastic fork. You don't need to go out and buy all the ceramic tools unless you are planning on really getting in to ceramics and pottery. So I've got it about where I like it. Normally I would mess with it a little bit more, but I wanna show you guys the feet before we run out of time. So there's a few different feet you can add. I mean, honestly, that could be a bowl. It could stand on itself. I could tap it on the table a little bit and flatten it out and that just be a regular foot. However, when we get into finer arts, we want to have a nice profile on our work. So if I am taking two pinch pots together, I would then do something called score and slip and I put them together. I would probably use a wooden spoon, beat them together, make a ball, and that's how we did something like the rattle. But for just a basic pinch pot that would hold your jewelry, there's a couple of different bottoms. And um, my professor, Tony Wright at um, South Alabama University was the one that introduced me to this tripod foot. And I absolutely love it. I feel like even if your tripod, if your feet are not the exact height, having that tripod, just like a camera, it keeps your bowl from falling. Whereas doing this kind of round lip on the bottom, depending on how you do it, your bowl may or may not stand up. So it's just whichever profile you like better. And even this, this bowl has a slightly smaller foot and even though these two have the same type of foot, they have a very different profile to them. So if you think profile, if you're looking halfway, you're pretty much doing the same thing with ceramics. So you need a little bit more clay and you need to make a snake with it. So there's a lot of different ways to make coils. There's a right way and a wrong way. I try to show my students the right way, but I'm pretty sure I still end up doing it the wrong way because I've been doing it since the 80s with Play-Doh, it's just what's ingrained in my brain. So either foot that you're gonna do, you need to end up with kind of some kind of snake. It does not need to be perfect. So if I were to do the bottom round one, what I would do, I'd take my snake, I'm putting it on, trying to see exactly if it's long enough, if I need it longer or smaller. And then I'm gonna make my little donut here and I'm gonna score and slip it and make it into a foot. And I'll show you guys with that one, but if I were to do the tripod feet, you pretty much do the same thing, make your round coil, and then you're going to cut it in three. And when you attach it, you're going to attach the bottom. So a little plastic knife, another rib, a needle tool. There's all kinds of ways that you can cut your clay, but you're gonna need three pieces about the same height. I'm gonna beat that one down a little bit. And then I would 
attach those where I want them. And I can kind of like make a guess. I can flip this over and kind of, if I'm real gentle, I can figure out where I want them and make the tripod. So tripod, you're doing the same thing, but instead of adding the donut, you're just adding the little tip of your tripod foot. So slipping and scoring, whether you're working with air dry clay or this type of clay, you need some kind of slip or water and something to scratch up your surface. So a plastic fork, even a toothbrush, this works. So what I've got here, it's called slip. It's pretty much wet clay. So I'm gonna put my donut here. I'm gonna just kind of trace where I need to put, you know, my lines. And then I'm gonna do something that's called scoring. So it's where you're making, you're pretty much essentially scratching the surface. So I can score and slip in one with the toothbrush. And you wanna do this on both pieces and you can kind of see that scratched it up. I'm gonna scratch up my donut piece. And then I'm going to wiggle this down and it's going to stay because I've put it, but I'm not gonna leave it like that. I'm actually going to start blending. So you take your finger and you blend your piece and you wanna blend, blend, blend on the inside and on the outside. And that is going to attach your foot. You might need to do a little of that pinching action. There are some people that will make one smaller pinch pot and one larger pinch pot and just attach the smaller pinch pot as the foot to the larger pinch pot. So there is no wrong way to do clay. Like I said, before you actually fire it, it is not set in, set in stone. So not my best foot, but this is something probably the first time you do this, your foot's gonna look something like this. And I would blend it a little bit better, but I wanna show you guys a few other things before we run out of time. So I would just, tap it on the ground there and I've got a bowl. I can come back in with the sponge, fix it if I want to. Um, but like I said, if I hate this, you just squish it and you start again. It's not a big deal. So after the clay, we would put it in the big kiln that's gonna cook it at about a little over a thousand degrees. It's gonna come out and look like this. This is one of my ceramics two, which is actually ceramics one, students work. After they do this, they add some kind of glaze. So you have shiny glaze, you have under glaze. I suggest doing research. This is a hard thing. We glaze it, it looks like this. We pop it out and it comes out and looks like this. But you guys can use watercolor, acrylic, any kind of paint to finish up your air dry pinch pots. So go have fun, remember, if it doesn't work out, squish it, start it again, keep trying. Everybody is an artist and I will see you next time.